Color grading. It's the process of getting these shots to look like this visually when in reality this is what the footage looks like straight out of the camera. Color grading is my absolute favorite part of the editing process and I feel like this is where a lot of my personal style is and that personal color style is what I am so excited to be sharing with you today as from today when this video launches I am officially releasing my very first digital products, the Element Power Grade V1 as well as the Element LUT Pack V1. is going to talk you through eligibility, how to use them, basically everything you need to know about these two products. This video is going to have chapters, so if you only need to see a specific part, I'll have timestamps on the screen somewhere or down in the description. So the first item is the Element Power Grade, and this is one that I'm so excited to be releasing. This is only available inside of DaVinci Resolve Studio, and what it is essentially is my personal node tree that I use to color grade my videos. The second digital product I have launching is the Element Light Pack, and that is a more universal option for color grading. So these are dot cube files, there's five LUTs, and essentially these will work in any program that uh, allows the use of 3D LUTs. So Premiere Pro, Final Cut, all those sort of editing programs. Please be aware that the LUT Pack is specifically designed for log footage. So if you don't have a camera that shoots log, these LUTs are gonna to be too intense and they won't look good. Do not worry though, I haven't forgot about you guys. In the near future, I do have a LUT pack for mobiles and Rec. 709 cameras releasing. So just keep an eye out for that. The power grade will work on any footage because you can customize what camera footage you're actually putting into the program. So it doesn't matter if you're using an iPhone, it doesn't matter if you're using an Arial X site. The only thing you will need is DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is the full version of DaVinci Resolve. The Element Power Grade also comes with the LUT pack pre-installed. So if you do decide that you wanna use LUTs in your workflow, you've got them included in your purchase. If you're wanting to purchase one of these two products, they will be available in the first link in my description on my new website. So the first product that I'm gonna be talking about is the LUT pack as it's a more universal option for editors out there. There are five LUTs inside of the pack and like I said, these are designed specifically for log footage. Installing LUTs is very easy from my end once you purchase the pack, you will receive an email from Squarespace with a link valid for 24 hours to download the product. From there, you'll receive a zip file. Go ahead, unzip the file, and then simply YouTube how to install LUTs in whatever program you're using. I'll actually leave a few example videos for the popular editing programs in the description. This light pack is designed to give you my personal looks and styles, but it's also a chance for you to understand color grading and start to develop your own style. You can build on top of these LUTs and really create unique styles. For the demonstration of this light pack, I'm going to do a basic demonstration inside of Premiere Pro and just sort of show you what can start to be done with this light pack. So this is the Element LUT Pack tutorial walkthrough, if you will. Hey, this is Jack from the future. I'm currently editing the video you're watching and uh, I've noticed something. I've been having a bit of trouble with one of my lenses and that was the one I filmed this video with. And as you can see, the focus is soft. So um, yeah, I'm not stupid. Something's going wrong with my lens and I've only just realized it after recording this video. So. <laughs> Just uh, do your best to ignore that and uh, carry on. I'm not gonna go in depth. This is not a color grading tutorial, but this is just showing you the basics of how to actually use the pack. So I've got my computer here and we're gonna do this inside of Premiere Pro. So we have three clips in our timeline, as you can see. We're gonna start with this rainy freeway clip. Really like the mood in this clip. So this is our 
basics panel. You can do any adjustments that you need to here, whether you shot your clip to dark, highlights are blown out, whatever. Do whatever you need to do. However, I actually prefer to apply my LUT first. So I'm gonna to go to creative, click on look, browse, find where I've saved my LUTs. And for this example, I'm gonna use neon. And as you can see, that has made a big difference, but it doesn't look quite right. It's too intense and it just, yeah, we're not 100% of the way there yet. So I'm gonna go back into my basic correction and the first thing I'm gonna do is take out a lot of contrast. Next thing I'm gonna do is adjust my highlights, my shadows, and I'm also gonna slightly adjust the whites and the blacks. That is already looking a whole lot better than the clip we started with, but it still feels a little bit off. If this still doesn't look quite right, one thing you can do is play with the intensity of the LUT, turning it up or down. This pack is designed for log footage, but log profiles are different between different camera manufacturers. So some may require a more intense look, others you might need to dial it down a little bit. For me though, I'm gonna leave it at 100 because this is where you can maximize the colors. The final thing I'm gonna do is play with my white balance. So you'll see here we have two sliders. We have a blue and yellow slider and then we have a green and purple slider. Adjust these how you want, have a play. That's the point of sliders. You slide them around, see what looks good. And then you also have the ability to build on top of these LUTs. So I can go into my creative panel, saturation, vibrance. I can add more contrast in the tone curve. I can do anything that I would like to do. And I can start to understand color grading. This is our before and that's our after. Big difference and that is our first clip done. Moving on to our second clip now. We have this shot of me sitting on a roof in Paris. I'm gonna start with some basic adjustments because the clip wasn't exposed uh, exactly how I'd like it. I'm then gonna click on creative, gonna find my LUT that I would like to use. I think that teal would look best for this. I don't know, let's try it. Bang, a lot has been applied. I don't know, I like it, but I wanna try another one. Let's try grunge, I like this one. Oh yeah, I much prefer the look of that. I'm gonna roll with this one. Now I'm gonna go back to my basic corrections. I'm gonna play with my contrast. I'm gonna drop those highlights just a little bit, bring the shadows up, and then finally crush the blacks. Then I'm just gonna adjust my white balance, all that jazz. I've tried to design these to be super simple to use while also still looking good. My personal style is quite uh, intense, abstract. I don't know how to describe it, but there's a lot of LUTs out there that are one click, you click it and hey, it's made an adjustment, it looks good. Mine do require a little bit of extra work, which is what I'm trying to show you here. But if you stick that out, you can get some really nice results with these. This is our starting clip and this is what we ended up with. Okay, so for my final clip, we have a sort of dawn situation. I am going to not speak for this one. I'm just gonna show you a sped up version of what I am doing to edit this clip. You'll see I actually am going to make a few little adjustments in the curves and just demonstrate how you can start to do your own color grading as well and learn about color, how to do your own stuff. Yeah, give it a watch. Okay, so that was the LUT pack. Moving on to the power grade now, this is what I'm really excited to be bringing to you guys because this is what I personally use to color grade my videos. This is a fully customizable node tree and if you're new to DaVinci, this may look very scary, but trust me, it isn't. I've actually made this so it's as easy to use as possible. I will mention again that you do require DaVinci Resolve Studio for this to work and that you do actually get the LUT pack included if you purchase this, so there's always another the option if you want to incorporate LUTs into your color, gate, color gating, into your color grading process. I've got my computer here and I'm going to talk you guys through the element power grade first. So as you can see here, I have three separate clips with different lighting on my timeline. 
this isn't an in-depth color grading tutorial for DaVinci, but essentially you'll see here we have a start point and an end point. Uh, and then we've got like this picture panel and anything I do to this picture panel uh, affects our image. I can then add as many of these panels as I want and individually adjust different sections. It sounds confusing, it takes a little bit of practice, but yeah, that is the premise of how color grading in DaVinci works with nodes. So my power grade is essentially a template that you can plug into DaVinci to color grade your videos and sort of learn about color grading and emulate my style. So you'll see here we have the element power grade panels. This is how it will look when you import into DaVinci. I'm gonna double click this and click on apply grade. Now you'll see a lot of stuff has changed. If I turn my effects panel off that there is all of these different nodes on my panel now. A lot of them are grayed out and that's because they're not engaged. But first I will just explain the setup of how I like to color grade. So this first level or line, if you will, is the basic adjustments to our image. The next level is our visual effects such as halation, glow and grain. The line after that all has to do with color and then the final line has to do with final adjustments such as skin tones, gradients, vignettes and I've left a few unspecified nodes. So starting with our color space transform, our very first node, if I click on here you'll see that this comes up. This is our effects page for the color space transform. And what this is essentially is a place where you can plug in your camera settings from your specific camera to be put on a timeline that you choose. In my case, in the case of this node tree, it is a REC 709 timeline. I'm trying to make this tutorial not sound as wordy and crazy as it needs to be, but a REC 709 timeline is just your normal timeline. So, so in my case, I'm gonna be converting Canon Log to a REC 709 and you'll see that there's quite a difference from what we started with. And you can see now that this is our starting clip and this is with a REC 709 conversion. Already looks a whole lot different. The next tabs are pretty basic. This is the exposure tab where I adjust exposure if I need to. I'm happy with this clip though, so I'm gonna leave it at this. The next panel is white balance where I'll make an adjustment if uh, I didn't nail the white balance while shooting. The next two nodes are just quick adjustments. So we have a black increase. You can see here, if I toggle this on, we crush the blacks and we have a white increase, which just pushes those highlights and whites a little bit more. The final node I've included here is noise reduction. If you toggle this on and you have a clip with a lot of noise in it, this is actually gonna clean a little bit of that up. Like I said, this is fully customizable. So you can see here, we've got all these sliders. You can go in and adjust it however you feel necessary, but I always like to include this in my node tree and it's actually pretty powerful in DaVinci and I do use this when I need to. So now we're moving on to the start of the effects and you'll see here if I toggle on halation, nothing's gonna happen. And that's because this is actually what we call a compound node. Uh, and essentially if you double click on this and click show compound node, this new panel is gonna open up. These are the presets that I've created for halation that I will use. So we have a light, we have a medium, and we have a heavy. You can use whichever one you want. You can use all three if you want to. And you can also go in and individually adjust these. I'm gonna go with medium for the sake of this tutorial. After that, double click again, and we're going to exit the compound node. You can see there we've already made quite a big difference. Heading over to glow now, this is another effect that I will very often use in my videos. I'm gonna to toggle with these, see what I like. Once again, we have light, medium, and heavy. Finally, we've got grain on this line. I usually add grain to all of my videos. We have a soft and we have a grungy and finally a custom option. I'm gonna go with soft for this tutorial. I really like the look of just a, a nice light grain. Moving down to the color line now, I have a LUT application panel here. This is the LUT application section. There's no effects on this at all, but if you choose to use a LUT in your workflow, then this is where I would apply it. I do have a LUT pack, which is included if you purchase the Element Power Grade, but this does have uh, inbuilt color adjustments, which you'll see further down this line. But hey, if you wanna use a LUT, this is here for you. You can also use any other LUT that uh, you so desire. Okay, so here we have the tone curve. I'm gonna open this up and we have three options once again. These are three presets that I will always use on my videos. So the first is a basic S-curve, the next is a more shadow heavy tone curve, and the final one is a 
highlight heavy tone curve. I'm gonna exit that. You'll see the next one we have is the film fade. If I toggle this on, you can see our blacks become faded and it's a lot less contrasty. I'm not gonna use it for this clip. Next, we have our RGB tone curve. If I toggle this on, open it up, you'll see there's three presets. We have a grungy, we have a warm vibe, and then finally we have a futuristic blue vibe. You can mix and match these as much as you want. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use grungy green and the warm vibe. Exit out of that compound node. Next we have color wheels. Open it up and again, we have three presets. You can see here, toggle them on and off. They do different things. I'm actually gonna add in some blue in this instance. I just feel that the image is needing that. Exit this and then finally we have HSL slider adjustments. I try to avoid using HSL to change tones of an image because they can be quite aggressive and I don't really think they look good a lot of the time but these are two very slight and important adjustments that I do in my videos. So the first is a desaturation of blues. If you've got a yucky blue in your image, try to toggle this on and it becomes desaturated and a more teal look, which I personally prefer. And I also have a green adjustment just to soften them up a bit. You can also open up the HSL panel and once again, fully customize whatever you would like to do. The point of this pack is for you to understand editing. So you can see if I click on this RGB tone curve, I can start to drag it around and just create my own cool colors and looks. It's organized in a way that allows you to be able to do this in the best way possible and experiment for yourself. And then the cool thing is you can keep going back on everything you do. So you'll see here, I can click on my white balance. I can adjust this exposure. If the exposure needs to change, we can do it. It's really uh, an intuitive way of color grading and this is the personal way in which I do it. Moving on to our final line now, I've left a skin tone node. If you know how to adjust skin tones, this is where I would do it. This clip though does not have any skin tones, so I'm not gonna be worrying about that. I am going to toggle on my gradient though, because this is something I like to add to a lot of my clips. These last two nodes I've left as unspecified. I just always like to have something there at the end if I wanna make an adjustment or add something, maybe an overlay for example. But these nodes have nothing on them. And that is our first clip done. As you can see, pretty big difference. Okay, moving on to our second clip now. I'm gonna speed these up because you're getting the idea. And the thing is, you don't have to follow these lines. So you'll see here, I'm going to go to the tone curve first, enable this, open it up, have a play, see what I like. I think the S curve looks nice, but it also may be a little bit too intense. So I'm gonna open up the opacity and I'm gonna drop this. Again, another customizable feature that you can do. Okay, so now we're gonna add some glow, just a light touch, and I'm also gonna bump my exposure once again. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of film fade for this shot, but I'm also gonna drop the intensity of that. Now I'm gonna make my color adjustments. So I'm gonna open up the RGB tone curve add the warm vibe, which already makes such a big difference. Open up the color wheels panel and have another play. So you can see we've got the yellow and we've got the green. I don't think blues would look good in this situation, so I'm not gonna use them. I'm gonna go with the yellow once again. You can see here though, we've got this yucky blue that I personally don't really like. So I'm gonna open up my HSL slider and try and get rid of that. You'll see our toggle on blue and it hasn't done much. Not to worry though, because we can go in and adjust this. So I'm gonna get my eyedropper tool, place it, and you'll see that on my line, we have a new dot now. And you'll see, I can drag this down and all of a sudden that yucky blue, that yucky blue is more desaturated and looks a lot more natural. Next, I think I'm gonna actually add some halation. So I'm gonna open this up. I like the look of medium, but it just feels a little bit too weird. So I'm gonna drop the intensity and opacity of that. I'm gonna actually drop it right down just so it's a nice subtle change. And you can see that's making a little bit of a difference in the highlights. Finally, just gonna adjust my white balance and skin tones look okay in this, so I'm not gonna adjust them. And there we have it. That is our second clip done and dusted. Okay, so this is our final clip. I'm not gonna talk through this one. I'm just gonna play it in times two speed and show you my process of me working through this power grade and exactly how I use it.
have it. That is our third and final example clip fully color graded. Yeah, that is it. I hope this video has given you an adequate insight into the power grade and the LUT pack. This is actually how I learned how to color grade. I used to buy other people's LUTs and power grades. I can't remember off the top of my dome whose I've purchased, but I'll actually link them down in the description. I'll go through my emails and yeah, if you're looking for a different style compared to my personal look, hey, they're an option. I'm very proud to be releasing these. It's a very new venture for me. I've never sold anything online, but it's also a process I didn't want to rush. So these have been in development for a fair few months now. And yeah, it's a combination of the years of color grading and I just realized how bright I am. The struggles of recording in a tiny French studio, not fun. As I was saying, this is years of practice, of editing, of revision, of learning. Yeah, overall, I'm just hoping that people can really use this creative tool and I'd love to see what you guys create with these packs. So please tag me, all that jazz. Um, I really enjoy seeing what you guys create. If you do purchase one of these packs, I would like to say thank you. It means a lot to me and I reinvest a lot of my income into camera stuff so you're helping to support me support my work and it truly does mean a lot that being said though please do not feel pressured to buy these simply engaging with my work is more than enough that is it for me today stay cheeky and i will catch you guys in the next one